Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ken Busby, your cultural czar, member of the board of the Tulsa Symphony, and we're here today with our musician moment with percussionist Steve Kraft. Hey, Steve, how are you? Hey, Ken, how are you doing? I'm good, sir. It's good to see you. Good to see you. You're I've looking. Of, I've keep seeing you in a couple of board meetings recently, so it's always good to see you. Get a chance to chat individually. I know. I know. So, um, <laughs> I uh, anyway, I appreciate you taking some time to be with us today. Uh, uh, this, this, these musician moments have been really fun for letting people get to meet our uh, musicians and our TSO family, you know, in a more casual setting, uh, but just get to learn a little bit about what it takes to make up this great family of ours. So I'm really curious, well, I'm curious about a lot of things about you, uh, but um, how long have you been with the Tulsa Symphony? Well, uh, since its beginning. Right. Right. And I was part of the... Uh... I didn't do a huge amount, but I was part of the development of it. Uh, went to several meetings with uh, Frank Letcher and all the stuff to start, start the orchestra. So right, uh, fun times. <laughs> they were fun times. Yes, I, I uh, yes, we we're, we're a little older now uh, than we were then, but uh, no, but it's it's remarkable to think here we are getting ready to start our fifteenth season and how far we've come uh, as an organization and that and that we got to be a part of it. So it's it's cool. Um, yeah, I'm curious also. Uh, how you came to be a percussionist, how you were driven to that. Okay, well, that's a, a very interesting story. Of course, every kid, when they grow up, they want to be a drummer. Right. So uh, I actually convinced my mom and dad to let me take drum set lessons Wow. In fifth, in fifth grade. And then I joined public school band. And, of course, I was I had already had some training. Right. Um, and then I just, you know, continued on through that. And uh, actually, I was pretty lucky. I, I grew up... Um, in a small town um, called Madison, Indiana. Right. And I um, met a gentleman that had a country band. So yep. I, that was my job uh, all through high school. Right. I played drummer in a country band. Right. Uh, but I, wasn't, I still wasn't ready to be a percussionist. I didn't like any of that stuff yet. Okay. And then um, my parents took me to see the Louisville Orchestra. Yep. Uh, and they performed Mahler 5. <laughs> and <laughs> I was sitting in the, we were up in the balcony or someplace and I was watching the cymbal player, and it just was so great to watch. And I looked, leaned over to my mom, and I said, that's what I want to do. And she said, okay, hon. And then I'm like, all right. Well, I'm not sure anybody really knows what being a percussionist is until you actually do it. So Right. I, was just, I want to talk about some of the things that you get to do, because I don't think we have a clue of what all you do. But I was right. thinking when you mentioned the Mahler 5, and of course... Several years ago, we did Mahler 5 with the Tulsa Symphony, so that had to be, I know you've done it before, but that had to be a very special moment for you. But it was a very special form, moment for me, Ken. Um, I actually played timpani on that concert, okay. which was tremendous to play. Sure. Um, and uh, it was a very emotional moment. Uh, the, and the, the best moment was listening to the slow, the Adagietto, which is one of my favorite pieces, favorite movements. Even I don't, I don't have anything in the part, so there's no percussion in that movement, but I, I was just... Uh, I was just so you got to enjoy it. I got to enjoy it. I, I teared up on stage just listening to it because it was so beautiful. I'm so. sure. And and as you recall, too, that was the longest standing ovation that the yes. PAC had had in its, well, at that time, uh, let's see, we're on 45-year history now, but it was right. probably its 40th, 40 40-year history at that point or whatever. Right. Um, that's just remarkable. It was over six minutes standing ovation. Everyone right. was so moved by that performance. I'll, I'll never forget it. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I won't either. It was so moving. Oh, so wow. That's so cool. Um, mm -hmm. So, yes. Yeah, so, as, uh, as a, you were tipping us on that. So, as a percussionist, what all do you get to do? You, I see you move around a lot on stage, right. moving from various areas, doing things. So, what all do you get to well, do? You know, it's interesting because I just watched um, the interview with Ashley. Uh -huh. And she was talking about um, how her mother said it can't be because it wouldn't fit in a Honda. Um, right. So she had to play cello. And right. So, uh, first thing you got to do as a percussionist, you got to drive a big van. Um, <laughs> right. Because you have to be able to move your gear. Sure. Um, and you get to you get to do different things almost every performance. So, um, you know the the gear that you have to bring could be different one week from the next. So it's not like just you know carrying my violin and going to work. I, I you know I have to plan and make sure I have the instruments that I need for that specific concert and right. uh, luckily i've never forgotten anything uh, so good not, not, not good do, do you keep a written list a checklist sometimes uh yes i put them in my phone and uh -huh. i go into go into my storage room and grab out what i need uh -huh. put it in a you know a little duffel bag and, uh -huh. and load it up and as i as i put them in the bag i delete them from my list so uh -huh. I know what I got. <laughs> very cool yeah 
Um, so, okay, so yeah, so, uh, yeah, just why don't you go over some of the, the variety of things that you get to play. Okay. Well, actually, there's a, a, a lot of things, actually, I could show you. Uh, okay. Actually. Oh, if you have time, uh, we'd love to. Oh, yes, I definitely have time. So, uh, I was waiting for you to ask what's on your stand. Okay, um, I can start with that one if you'd like. No, actually, don't. We, we've already led into this. And I was just going to say, no, what's in my house? There you go. Uh, oh, that would have been funny. So, Sorry, man. So, I messed up the joke. Right. I messed up the we joke. We got it. So I'll take you guys on a little tour here. Great. Uh, of course, with being in Locked Inside, we have several different projects that we do, whether for teaching, um, different things like that. So um, right here in my living room, uh, we have a set of congas. Ah, yes. And um, I've been doing a recording with one of the steel drum bands that I play with. Fun. Um, working on that. Nice. And as we move on... <laughs> Um, it's like we, stations. We have stations. Right. Uh -huh. We do have stations. Well, yes. One thing with the instruments, they take up a lot of room. Right. I was so, thinking about um, that. I, you know, I, I imagine single percussionists everywhere probably won't get married if they ever um, watch this video. But <laughs> this next place is my now my wife's office. Um, okay. She's a band director, so she's right. been teaching. Right. Hi, Cindy. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and this is my uh, xylophone practice room. Yes, very nice. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I'm, I can't really see if I'm showing you everything. Uh-huh. Um, maybe I'll flip the, flip my camera. That's okay, too. Yeah. Here's, here's, our, here's our fur babies. Here's our fur babies, yes. Aw. Yes, Aren't they precious? They are. They're very precious. So, And then in here, we have basically my percussion room. Oh, yeah. Which is, uh, we have a marimba here. Right. Which uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, online teaching mm -hmm. um, with various students, either at TCC or in Bartlesville. Sure. Um, I teach, and so we've learned how to do that in different formats. And then we have um, a set of timpani. Right. And then a snare drum. Yep. Right here. A set of bells. Right. Right there. All the junk that I need to pull out at different times. Wow. Hung up, in, um, hung up in shoe racks, you know, or shoe, whatever that thing is. Uh huh. Um, so, and different things like that. So, that's pretty much what I do, you know. Um, wow. Walk into different rooms depending on the project that I'm working on and practice or play or teach. Um, we did, we did, no lie, we did straighten up a little bit for this. So, <laughs> oh, thank you. We appreciate that. Um, so, and then, and in here we have my uh, summertime activity, which is set oh, of steel drums. Right. And so I've been doing a lot of that stuff lately as well. Nice. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's great to just kind of um, toys. dabble and play around with different things during this time, and hopefully get better as a musician. <laughs> uh, um, well, yes, I guess musicians are always trying to improve. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, well, that was great. Thank you. I thank yeah, you for the tour. Um, so, can, not to put you on the spot like this, but let me put you on the spot. Um, can, can you? Can you? Give me a number for the most uh, different instruments you've had to play for any one orchestra performance. Oh, geez. Um, I'm trying to think of... Or just sort of a ballpark. Because it seems like I see you, you're easily doing four or five different things. Right. Um, you know, when, when a composer writes for percussion, they may have one sound that they want uh, for a certain moment. Like, it just may be simple as a triangle mm -hmm. or a green. And then, rather than just have, like... I'm playing triangle and then resting the rest of the piece. Though we we organize it so that okay, I can play triangle here and then move to the xylophone part. Okay. Um, or, okay. Or move to the vibraphone part or whatever it is. Okay. And so, you know that takes some organization as to how you set set up the section as to where things are and sure. how quickly you can move to different things um, and things like that. So it's a you know it's a lot of organization. Um, I, yeah, it seems like it. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. So. Um, I think you've sort of addressed this in, in some ways, uh, but seeing how busy you are and you're teaching and you're teaching online and, 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 and all the bands that you perform with and, and orchestras and so forth, do you have any downtime? Uh, n no, not well. I do now, but... Um, <laughs> but in general, no, in general. Not really. It's, it's pretty much a, a busy, you know, busy yeah. from September through May. Um, right. With, you know, playing, you know, with... Of course, Tulsa Symphony plays for the ballets, right. and many of us are in the opera orchestra. Right. Um, I've been I'm lucky enough to play over in Fayetteville with the orchestra. Right. And I'm on the sub list in Oklahoma City. Okay. As well. Okay. So 
Um, there's very rarely that I have a week where I, I don't have work to do. So, sure. um, and actually when I do, I, I feel a little bit odd because I'm home. <laughs> like, uh-huh, right. You can't get to, you know, you can't get dinner until you get home from rehearsal. That's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 So, um, so, okay. So any, any hobbies at all? Anything you uh, like to do when you're not musicking? I, I like grilling. Okay. Uh, and cooking. Um, Actually, I've seen some of your Facebook posts. I keep thinking, I don't know what to do to get an invitation to come over sometime. But uh. <laughs> Well, you know, um, we, the thing of it is, I'm, I'm, the, I'm a cook for two people, so I don't, I don't think I do very well with large groups. I would definitely panic. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You, are you calling me a large group if I add one more to your... <laughs> no, 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 I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm teasing. So, so that, yeah, so uh, I like to, do like to grill, uh-huh. and... Um, you know, and of course, with the thing about music that's been so great um, is that it's something you love to do. So right. I, I think my job is, is a hobby because, it, you know, it's something I can always do and I always enjoy. I don't ever hate going to work. You know, I don't, I don't ever hate it. It's which something is, I love. So. Which is awesome. And you can really see that just when I talk with you, but when I see you at, at a performance... Uh, you, mm-hmm. you can just t- you can just see joy in your face. Right. I mean, you just re- I mean you're concentrating, you're working, but but you really are enjoying it. Yes. Oh yes. And that comes yes. that comes out. Well, listen. Right. Uh, thanks so much for sharing all this, and and you're going to do a little uh, a little uh, music for us now, right? We're right. going to get to hear some. What are we, what are we going to get to enjoy? Well, we're going to get to enjoy uh, Bach Prelude in C. Nice. From the Well Tempered Clavier. Yes. But on steel drums. <gasps> Fun. Yeah. Now so that's something a, we don't hear every day. So that's not something you hear every day. So all right. We got to figure out a way to get a, a a steel drum solo in some upcoming concert. That there, could is, be... there are some pan solos, for, uh, concertos. Okay. Um, unfortunately, um, they're really hard. <laughs> you can do it. You're really good. It'll be okay. <laughs> I would bet. I should. I should start now. Maybe ten years. I might be ready. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> Well, Steve, it's uh, this has been a lot of fun. So I will yeah. uh, I'll invite our audience to sit back and and uh, enjoy uh, hearing some steel drums. That'll be a, yeah. a good thing to enjoy, and it's really great seeing you. And uh, I will look forward to seeing you in person again, hopefully very soon. Me too, Ken. All right, take care now. All right, thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.